Okay, now let's implement the array stack. Uh, let's see, what to do first? Well, actually the first thing I wanna do here is I want to write a Java doc for the class itself. Okay. Um, and in this Java doc, uh, okay, I always forget what to put here. Uh, I think I've got this written down somewhere. Uh, the type of elements in this stack. Type of elements in this stack. Um, I want to put three things here. Uh, I want to say that, well, first I want to say that this is an implementation of the stack interface and it uses an array. And then I want to give a typical representation. And I'm, you don't, again, this is not something that you'll find in Java best practices, but um, I feel since I'm, since this is the implementation of the class, uh, I want to explain how I implemented this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say what an array stack is, and uh, I'm going to put this in code. An array stack is an implementation of the, and here's another uh, little tag uh, link. Uh, I'm going to link to bounded stack dot stack there uh, and sometimes this works I think since bounded stack dot stack I think since the Java docs are in a library um, this is not really going to work when you try to compile the Java docs in Eclipse but it's a uh, it's good practice to do this uh, so an array stack is an implementation of the bounded stack dot stack uh, that uses an array. Okay, so uh, simple as that. And so now I want to, I'm going to break this up with paragraphs. Um, now I want to say that a typical uh, representation is uh, the following and then I'm, I'm gonna actually put this representation so uh, I want to actually make this give this some emphasis make it bold and I spelled strong wrong there Um, and because this is a multi-line thing, I need to put pre before I do the code thing. Um, and I'm going to indent it a little bit. One, two, three, four. Uh, private e elements. Um, and actually, I'm just going to put. Uh, I'm just going to describe them right here um, so elements is uh, the array that holds the stack element the array that holds the stack elements just to give people who are looking at this an idea of uh, what these variables are without going into <clears throat> a lot of detail uh, then depth is um, this will be the current number of elements in the stack and then uh, private int capacity is going to be uh, the maximum maximum number of elements the stack 
can hold. All right, and then I'm going to close off my uh, code and close off my pre. Save that. Uh, and now I'm going to put uh, another pair. I'm going to start another paragraph. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the abstraction function and the representation invariant. Okay. So the abstraction function is, and then I'm going to do this in code also. And actually, I'm going to do this in such a way that is that it is not a multi-line thing. But that's okay. I'm still going to use the um, formatting for multi-line. Uh, so this is going to be, basically, I want it to look like this. I want there to be a bunch of elements, uh, a colon, and then the capacity. And the capacity is just going to be the capacity. Um, and each of the elements, so essentially I have like E1, E2, uh, dot, 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 and E to, to some number K, but I know what these E's are. Okay, the first E is going to be uh, the first element in the array. So this is going to be elements of zero. The second E is going to be elements of one. And the last E is going to be elements of, uh, it's not depth, it's going to be just one shy of depth. So it's going to be depth minus one is the last element it's depth minus one is the last element in the array that is meaningful to the abstraction okay the other elements in the array uh, do not contribute to the abstraction so this is the abstraction function close that off close that off uh, put another paragraph marker uh, and now I want to give the representation invariant. The representation invariant is, and I'm going to pre for this, and, you know, the, the routine, same thing here. Oh, it gave me this. That's irritating. All right. Um, Sometimes Eclipse tries to be too smart. Okay, so the representation variant, I'm going to indent again. One, two, three, four. And for the representation invariant, I'm going to say that, I mean, these are things that have to be true about the representation. Okay, before and after each method call. These have to be true. So I'm going to say that um, the elements of the array that correspond to meaningful elements in the stack cannot be null. So the way I'm going to say that is I'm going to say elements uh, k, I'm just going to pick a elements of k is uh, not equal to null when uh, are, are just, yeah, for uh, k is between 0 and inclusive uh, and less than depth. So those elements are not allowed to be equal to null. All right, so that's uh, the first thing that needs to be true about uh, my representation. The other thing is that k is always going to be between uh, 0 and Actually, k, can k be 0? Of course, k can be 0. You can have a 0 length. I'm sorry, not k. That's what was confusing. I was confusing myself. Sorry there. Uh, depth has to be between um, 0 and depth. It can be also capacity, so it can be equal to capacity. And then there are restrictions on capacity. Capacity has to be... Uh, strictly greater than zero. 
Okay, let's think about this. Um, we said that we were going to throw an illegal argument exception if capacity was uh, less than zero, uh, less than or equal to zero. So yeah, capacity has to be strictly greater than zero. Um, and capacity is actually equal to the length of our array. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. I could probably split that up uh, into two uh, into two conjuncts there. So let's say that. Let's do that. Capacity equals the length of the array and capacity has to be greater than zero, strictly greater than zero. Okay, and I made these things a bold representation bold. I'm going to make abstraction function and representation invariant bold also. If I can find it, okay, strong. Uh, okay, so I think that, uh, okay, let's finish the uh, documentation uh, for this. Um, yeah, notice that it overrode those things, but it didn't put uh, the exceptions in there. That's okay. We're going to see those exceptions. Well, capacity does not have exceptions. I take that back. Let me see what it did for push and pop. Oh yeah, it did put the exceptions in push and pop. That's good. Um, so for each of these, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to put um, I'm going to put a tag in here called uh, inherit doc. All right, and that just means, actually, I'm just going to, whoops, uh, I'm just going to copy that. Uh, and that just means the Java doc is inherited from uh, whatever this class is inherited from. So this will inherit from abstract stack, and abstract stack will inherit from the uh, interface. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all of these methods. Just for completeness. Um, yeah, and you should know that if you try to generate Java docs with inherit docs, uh, if you're generating things from If you're trying to get inherited docs out of a library, it might not work that well in Eclipse. Okay, but I'm going to do it anyway because it is good practice to have Java docs for everything. Okay. Uh, an iterator, you might want to do something more specific for iterator, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now.